name is Gerrit Ludwig and I've been photographing for National Geographic magazine for over 20 years focusing on environmental issues and the changes in the former Soviet Union. At 1.23 a.m. on April 26, 1986, operators in the control room of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant botched a safety test, resulting in an explosion and a fire that burned for 10 days. The radioactive fallout spread over thousands of square miles, driving more than a quarter of a million people permanently from their homes. It was the world's worst nuclear disaster to date. To commemorate the disaster 25 years later, I'm set to return with my cameras to investigate the current state of contamination, the progress of the cleanup, and the health consequences in the fallout region. I'm asking for your support so that this important story will not be forgotten. I first photographed Chernobyl for National Geographic in 1993. More recently, in 2005, I ventured deeper into the contaminated reactor than any Western photographer. Here, radiation levels are so high that workers are allowed only one shift of 15 minutes per day. Radioactive remnants of the failed reactor continue to smolder inside the so-called sarcophagus, a concrete and steel encasement hastily erected after the accident. Less than two miles from the reactor, the city of Pripyat was only evacuated 36 hours after the explosion. Today, a chilling ghost town, its abandoned buildings are witness to the hasty departure. Ignoring radiation levels, some elderly have returned to their village homes inside the exclusion zone, preferring to die on their contaminated soil rather than from a broken heart in anonymous city suburbs. A dramatic rise in cancers and abnormalities has been observed downwind of the failed reactor. Environmental organizations state that more than 100,000 people have already died as a consequence of the disaster. Mothers are afraid of giving birth to unhealthy babies, and the emotional stress and the memory of the tragedy weighs heavy on those lucky enough to survive. Today, traditional media outlets are unable to provide the extended time necessary for long-term projects. As the 25th anniversary of the Chernobyl accident approaches, I'm asking for sponsorship for this long-term project. I want to continue my coverage, I want to update it, and I want to take my cameras again to severely contaminated areas. I know that my explorations are not without personal risk, but like many of my colleagues, I do this on behalf of otherwise voiceless victims. They expose their suffering solely in the hope that tragedies like Chernobyl may be prevented in the future.